If you caught last week's video, you know that my wife is attempting to build her biggest piece of custom furniture ever. This is gonna be huge. And that's saying a lot because this girl has built some pretty incredible pieces of furniture in her time. In part one, we showed you Andrea's design along with us buying tons of materials. But this week, it's time to get down to building. So join us today for part two of this massive cabinet building adventure. I want to say thanks to Husk for sponsoring today's video. We have a really busy night tonight with soccer practices and so I wanted to get a little bit ahead on meal prep for tonight's dinner and a really good knife can really help revolutionize your meal prep in the kitchen. Rather than buying several cheap knives that rust and dull easily, making them ineffective and a pain to use, it really is worth it to get a professional quality knife for all of your meal prep. They stay sharp and they make cutting those super thin slices much easier. The blades on husk knives are made from high quality Japanese inspired stainless steel and have a hygienic rustic style handle and a 38 degree blade edge that ensures extreme sharpness. These knives come out of the box razor sharp and they'll stay that way for years. Since the blade is so sharp, there's less risk of slipping and injuring yourself since you don't have to use as much force. These Japanese knives are 28 centimeters in length and only weigh 252 grams, making it a comfortable knife to use. Husk is currently offering our viewers a 70% discount on their authentic Japanese inspired knives. You can even test the knife with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're interested in trying out Husk knives, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Hey, you're back. <laughs> back in the saddle again. Back in black. Back streets back. So much easier to set up our workspace now. I don't even need your help anymore. Gosh, this thing is so beefy. Listen to the birds, they're going nuts. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. We have had a lot of birds. Don't shock yourself. <laughs> All right, so last week, if you watched our video, you know it took me just a little while to wrap my head around how I'm actually gonna build this, but I feel like it has finally clicked and I've got it and I'm ready to get started. So basically, this is gonna be really similar to any cabinet boxes that we've built, except I wanna have sliding doors like I talked about and instead of solid plywood sides, I want to have glass on my sides. So step one will be ripping down my plywood that will be the top and then the bottom of our pieces. Okay, so I want the overall depth of my piece to be 16 inches, and so since these are for the top and bottom, I'm gonna rip this 48 inch piece of plywood down to three 16 inch pieces. Since it's exactly three. 16 times, I'm gonna try and hit my blade right on my 16 inch mark, so it'll be just a little bit less than that. My last Otherwise, piece will end up being like a quarter inch shorter than the other two, if that makes sense. Uh. even yep another big boy yep so windy Ta -da. we good yep what is that this is a hardware for the sliding doors. I actually thought about building the doors without hardware. We decided since these doors are gonna be like over two feet wide and seven feet tall that they should probably have hardware to help them open more easily. <laughs> I don't think this actually has instructions. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's okay. The real reason I'm opening this now is not because I'm ready for hardware now, but along my bottom piece of plywood, I'm gonna have to route out two grooves that these are gonna sit into. I need to make sure that I don't make my plywood too wide. Okay, so I got the size that is just barely over 59 inches long, and so I'm gonna cut my plywood to be the same length as these, or probably actually a hair longer, just for a little bit of room for error, and then we'll come back to how to install these later once I figure that out. Are you sure you know what you're doing? 
<laughs> I mostly know what I'm doing and then the little bit that I don't, I'll figure it out. Fair enough. That's kind of how I work. <laughs> It would help if I plugged it in. Oh yeah, that would help. Plugged in. Hey babe, what? it's getting hot out here, but it's about to get hotter. <laughs> Drink time. Oh, you're just having cold water, huh? Not me. What a day. <clears throat> yeah, I can't show them with the shirt off, babe. I can't show them all the muscle action that's happening here. Can we throw up the before and afters of my workout routine real quick? After I finished cutting all of the boards I needed for the side panels, it was time to start assembling them. But man, it was so windy outside. It's so windy. Okay, so I got all the tops and bottoms of my boxes built. You got them built or you got them cut? I got them cut. Did I say built? <laughs> yeah. So for these, instead of a normal cabinet box where I would do plywood on the side, I said this earlier, but I want to have glass on my sides and I'll also have my glass sliding doors. So instead of a piece of plywood here, I'm going to build a frame out of one by threes and one by fours. I'm going to use one by fours on my bottom and top just because it'll end up lining up better with where the glass is on my doors on the front. And I'll use one by threes for my vertical pieces. And so we're going to start measuring for that. of the one by threes and one by fours that are going to be my very outside frames for glass. But like I said, I'm gonna have two smaller cabinets that are gonna meet together. And I have to have a panel for the inside, but I don't want plywood panels going down the middle of my cabinet. So I'm going to build those two inside side panels where they're gonna meet together out of one by twos instead of the one by threes and one by fours. Am I talking way too much? Yes. blowing across the table. That's crazy. Whoa. Is that the flow from right there? Yeah. What are we in Chicago? So next I'm going to be using a new tool that I got a while back, a biscuit joiner along with these little biscuits to join all of this together or attach it all or whatever. Normally you've seen me use pocket holes for this, but since these will be visible from the inside through all the glass, I don't want to use pocket holes. So I'm going to try out a new toy. When I hear biscuit joiner, this is kind of what I picture. Okay, so this is how these are going to join together. And so I'm going to use the biscuit joiner to drill in right there, right there. Then the biscuit goes in the middle. You glue it together, clamp it. Super easy. I've marked out, and you'll see me doing this right here, is where the center is. And then I'll line up this line on here with the center of that. I've got it set to the right depth for the size biscuit I'm using. So I did read that you want to use the largest size that you can because it'll just make it stronger and since I have a 1x4 here it's gonna, it goes this way you can see there's plenty of space for that and so this is the number 20 that's the biggest size you can get give me one of those biscuits a little biscuit Ow. This is what it looks like to film on a pogo stick. This 
is what it looks like when you film from a children's bicycle. That is so cool. Okay, so I went ahead and used the biscuit joiner on all of my 1x4s and 1x3s that are gonna go on the very far sides, but where I'm gonna have my 1x2s where the cabinets meet together, this is too small for this particular biscuit joiner. So since I'm going to be putting these together, I'm gonna use pocket holes on the sides where they're gonna meet together because you won't see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue and clamp the 1x3 and 1x4 boards that are gonna go on the two ends, and then we'll do the pocket holes after that. Oh, just biscuit joined them right together there. Put a little gravy in the middle, it's good to go, yeah? After I finished gluing and assembling all of the side panels, I clamped them together and then set them aside to dry. This is what it looks like to ride on a blue car and film. Next, I moved on to making pocket holes for my two inside panels. to assembling these and it was definitely easier with a second set of hands. Bring in the D team. <laughs> even my Everything is blowing over like even my bottle of glue. It's crazy. What are we in Chicago? Okay, so we're gonna call it quits today because it's almost time to go get our kids and we need to let these dry because the next step will be routing the inside for glass on the side panels and then routing the little dado on the back edge for back panel that'll slide in like you've seen me do in other cabinets. So that's it for today. I feel like we got good progress and be back at it tomorrow. So the glue has dried on all of these pieces, so we're ready to move on to the next step. I have a lot of routing to do today, and these two, these are the outsides of my cabinet. I've got my big router here with a rabbiting bit, so I'm gonna route along the inside edge of both of these so that we can attach glass for the inside of the cabinet. Okay, so I finished routing out for where the glass is gonna go. This will be like the inside of the cabinet. Next, I need to route a dado or a groove with my quarter inch straight bit. That is gonna be what the back of my cabinet slides into. So I need to do that to both of the sides, my two sides that are gonna be like the middle where the two cabinets meet, and then also the top and the bottom. So I'll just get my guide set up on my small router and then do the back edge of everything. Sounds like you got a lot of dating to do. <laughs> I mean, dadoing. Okay, so for the very back of my cabinet, since it's so wide and I'm gonna have a seam in my panels since they're wider than four feet each, I want to have some kind of one by scrap boards that go across behind my panels. And so I'm just gonna mark on here using this. It's three quarters of an inch, but I wanna make sure I have space to attach a piece of scrap wood. <laughs> Dean 
Dean's face is looking really lost. <laughs> Okay, keep going, I guess, yeah. Anyway, so I'm just making sure that this guide has at least three quarter inches, or pretty much exactly three quarter inches right there. So that's what I'm setting up, that way I can just leave this on the same setting for all of these boards I'm about to do. I got two of the side panels finished. It felt like I was making great progress until I noticed a slight problem. Oh no. What happened? My guide came loose. So my guide on my router came loose, the guide that keeps my bit the correct distance. And so if you look right here, I've got what will be kind of like my spacer board. And look how much extra room there is. So there's, I've got a lot bigger gap there. And then up here is how it's supposed to be where my board is even. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna set my guide up, make sure it's really tight, and then I'm gonna redo this groove, and we'll just see how it looks. Good job, babe. It looks like you're doing great work down there. So far. I'll try my best not to. After I finished most of the routing, we took a quick snack break. Smoothie break. And then headed to Home Depot to get the panels we needed for the back of the cabinets. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> How's that smoothie? Good. But on the way, we had a really unexpected delay. Hey, why are we getting pulled over? <laughs> Did I do something wrong? Hey, how y'all doing today? Hey, howdy. Hey, reason for the contact today, when you turned off right on 29th, you made a wide right turn. So whenever you're turning onto a highway, you have to use that closest lane of traffic. You have a okay. driver's license on you. So we learned a new law today that if you're turning right, even when the light is green, you have to turn into the inside lane. So he was really nice. Gave us a warning. Not going in quite yet. Kind of finish off these smoothies. Hey baby, you think I could get one of them John Deere over? Ow! We realized there were no lumber carts inside, so I went back outside to grab one and then went on a long journey to find Andrea. Darwin, I've been worried sick about you. Where have you been? So what are you looking for? I need a bigger router bit that's a little bit bigger than what I have. What about this one? Hey, is that big enough or <laughs> what do you use this for? Torture? Yes. Running off and leaving me again. What do you think Lowe's or Home Depot is gonna give you a call? Comment below if you think this girl should get a Lowe's or Home Depot feature. I mean, come on, it would be incredible. I've been working on my commercial voice just in case we get sponsored. Craig Diablo. After I grabbed a couple of smaller items that I needed, we finally found the panels that I plan to use in the back of the cabinet. Then I grabbed a 10 foot 1x6 that will act as a sort of baseboard once the cabinet is finished. from here yep. right, let's go and finally we were ready to load everything up into the clown car do you remember how to do that in this van Barely. let's get that 10 footer in there no problem for the minivan everything fit beautifully but it did require me to get a little bit uncomfortable not this again <laughs> uh-oh so comfortable <laughs> Home Depot didn't have a few of the boards that we needed, and so that meant we needed to make a trip to Lowe's. 
I found a cart, but it has a unique feature. It's slightly bent, as you can see. And of course, Andrea had to employ the wink technique. Go away. Let me see. Gosh, I forgot about this. <laughs> How are you even getting in there? Because I'm Houdini. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we made it! Well, we were having a good time today. I hope you're having a good time today. I'm just having one of those Mr. Rogers moments, you know, where it's just like, it's going to be a great day. That's just the way it is, okay? Perfect timing. Nice of you to join the party. How was your tinkle? Are you really gonna put that on there? <laughs> It's nothing to be ashamed of. Everyone goes tinkle. Can you stop? Just grab it. <laughs> oh, that hurt. I won. You got like rock hard. If it was a race, I would have won. Okay, Mrs. Competitive. The only people who aren't competitive are losers. <laughs> oh, I was just doing that for fun. I won. Watch your head. My turn to tinkle? Your turn. Let's go. Oh my goodness, it's so nice outside. It's sunny and beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the birds are really zinging and singing, huh? <laughs> okay, so we are getting so close to being able to assemble the boxes for these cabinets. I need to route the grooves that our doors are gonna slide on. Because if you remember, I'm not doing normal doors on hinges. I wanted to do something different. So these are actually gonna have tracks to slide in. So I did a little bit of math and measured out how far apart those need to be because I need one for each door and I need my doors to not hit each other. So we're gonna route those out really quick on all four of our plywood panels. So that's the top and bottom of each side. Okay, so I wanna make sure these little plastic tracks will fit because I'm pretty sure I need a little bit bigger of a router bit, but it was metric sizing, which we didn't have here. My option was quarter inch to half inch. Oh, that's not what you want to have. I was like, wow, it went in really easy at the end. That's what I was afraid was gonna happen. I'm gonna have to do a second pass. I'll glue that back. Once I confirmed that my router bit was definitely not quite wide enough and would require a second pass to make it a little bit wider, I did the first pass on all of my plywood. Woo! What was that? Splinter. Splinter? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this and do a second pass so I can get that just a little bit wider. I'm just gonna make sure it fits real quick. Ah, oh, much better. <laughs> All right, what's next, Vader? I'm gonna make the second line here for the second. Okay, I'm gonna route another line here for the second door since there will be two doors that are staggered so that they can both open. We need a second track. I need to put pocket holes on the underside and the top of all of my plywood pieces. We're thinking we hit a good stopping point for today. If we start on this next part, it's gonna take too long. We'll go past dinner time. So we're gonna clean up, then go hang out with the kids, cook dinner, and we'll be ready to actually start assembling tomorrow. Let's do this, baby. <laughs> Let's do this. Dean? 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, where are you going now? I'm getting a seafood on. Suppose it is a little warm out here in the Texas sun. There she is. Oh, work it, work it, work it, work it. All right, so we are ready to finally start assembling these. I'm going to put together three of the sides and then we'll cut the panels for the back. That way I can just measure it really exactly. Before I started assembling, I laid everything out in place and we got our first glimpse at just how massive this cabinet was going to be. I used wood glue, corner clamps, and pocket holes to assemble everything together. How wide it is. <laughs> we'll probably have to name this one Megalodon, you think? <laughs> probably. It's gonna be so cool. Look at like the, the panels for the sides. I'm so glad we decided to do glass for the sides. After I finished assembling the sides and the bottom of each cabinet, I pulled out the panels to cut them down to size, but then remembered I had one more step first. Okay, I have one more step before I cut this down and install this. I'm gonna go ahead and add some supports that are actually gonna go behind the panels. I have these extra one by twos in the garage. I'll need one more. I'm gonna cut them down to the width and then install them with pocket holes. After measuring and cutting the supports for the back of the cabinets, I added pocket holes to the end of each of the boards. And then finally I attached the supports using wood screws and then stood each cabinet up. Nice. And <laughs> those are huge. And in case anybody is wondering, these are just for supports. Doesn't matter where they're placed, so that's why they're not the same. All right, so first step in getting these installed is I need to cut the height. We'll check and make sure it fits, and then if it does fit, cut the rest of the panels, and then we'll worry about cutting the width. So the height is right, I got the measurement right, but I'm gonna flip this panel over just so that part that ripped is on the bottom where it won't really be noticeable. But all the measurements are right, so we're ready to keep cutting the panels down. Next, I cut the height on another panel and then measured and cut the width to finish off the back of the first cabinet. Mm -hmm. 
After we had the back panels cut and placed correctly, we attached the top of the cabinet using pocket holes and wood screws. Nice. <laughs> Let's put the lid on. Let's put the lid on it. I'm starting to feel the burn. Oh, I feel like I'm having deja vu. Atlas man, my deltoids are burning. It's like torture out more. How's your hand? Ouch. You're a tough gal. <laughs> Next, it was time to repeat the same process on the second cabinet. What large cabinets you make. <laughs> we finished up with just enough time to get everything put away in the garage and then go pick up the kids. Well, amazing job on making progress on this massive cabinet build. And whether it looks like it or not on film, there were so many things that got done in this stage of the process. So way to go, babe. <laughs> Yeah, it feels really good to actually get to start building this piece because there was so much planning and problem solving and just figuring out how to do something I haven't done before because it is a little different. But I'm excited because it's going well so far. What's crazy about this project is it's literally double the size of her biggest cabinet build before and so effectively it's doubling every part of the process. Because it is actually two cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I have to keep reminding myself of that because we'll get to the end of the week and I'm like, why is this taking so long? Why am I not finished with this? And it's like, oh, there were a lot of cuts and a whole lot of routing and we speed it up for the videos, but some of that stuff just takes forever. Yeah. So that's it for this week's video and we can't wait to show you the progress that Andrea makes in next <laughs> week's episode. So we'll catch you there. Andrea face cam. We should put it on your face. <laughs> Why? No one wants to see this face up close. Oh. <laughs> Professionals. <laughs> oh. All right, ready? <clears throat> so that's it <laughs> for this. Look at you making a face. I'm going. You may oh, only have again. one shot with me, so you better just get your act together and, and hope for the best. What you figuring out now? How tall to make my cabinets? Because I don't, I want to account hey, for. Hey, excuse me. Hold. Hey, can you see that we are filming here? Excuse me. My, what a tall tower you are. What about? You're too ginormous. <laughs> you looking at me? Look out. What? I can feel my face turning red just <laughs> watching you doing that and seeing a car out of the corner of my eyes. <laughs> just a couple of goons!